Hi there, this is Jacob Ball, Jacob's Ladder with Team Card Hoarder. Uh, we're back with another modern video for you. Uh, this week we're going to be playing at the Grand Prix uh, Dallas Fort Worth winning list uh, made by Kevin Mackey. Uh, and it is a deck that you've seen for a while, but it's got a few new updates and uh, it's certainly, I think, well positioned in the metagame right now. So I definitely want to see how this deck works out and uh, get some games under it with my belt because it could be a major player in, in the uh, meta right now uh, just because of how hateful it is towards the other decks that see play right now. So it's got a lot of good tools to fight everything and a lot of uh, nice finishers and a lot of good removal. So uh, let's just go over everything with you. Uh, it's got uh, the... Perfect mana base. Uh, it doesn't have to worry about taking any damage from its mana base, so obviously it helps against the burn matchup, thing like that, uh, or thing like that. So it's got just basically 20 snow covered mountains, uh, two scrying sheets. Uh, scrying sheets is a nice tool to help stop you from flooding out. You can just activate it when you when you have too many lands, and you uh, you can just like draw additional lands and draw more spells in it just by activating it a bunch. So. It's pretty nice, uh, and then uh, just go to the, the deck. You got four relics to help fight dredge uh, and any other graveyard-based strategy, which is just a very nice thing to be able to do in your main deck. Uh, a pyrite spell bomb, uh, just to basically be fill a role as a shock or just a digging engine, but most of the time just going to be the, uh, like the tenth uh, target removal in this deck for early creatures. Uh, then we have Scred, which is the reason why we play so many Snow-Covered Lands. Uh, it deals damage equal to the snow covered turns you control, which is only the lands, but that's still plenty. Yeah, it'll deal uh, normally probably two or three damage to a creature, uh, but in the late game it just kills everything, so it's a really nice. Uh, we got four Lightning Bolts, just the, obviously the best burn spell probably ever, uh, so we got four of those, obviously. Uh, we have Mind Stones to help uh, cast all of our four drops. We do have a lot of those, including, and we have some fives, so... Uh, it's a nice to skip the curve and play that card, and the value of of sacrificing late game to just draw additional cards is obviously pretty nice. So it's just the best two mana rock you can play. And then we have a Singleton Magma Jet, uh, I guess, to uh, help filter filter the deck a little and just just be another shock. So uh, I'm not sure which one of these two cards is better, but uh, I'm sure. He took both of them under consideration when he added them, so I'm definitely going to be trying them out, see which one I actually like more. I'm leaning towards uh, the Magma Jet, but who knows. Uh, and then we have Ingers, again, it's really good against Dredge, and uh, a lot of different decks like Affinity, and just who, who knows, Elves, anything like that. It's just obviously good to have sweeper, uh, like cheap sweepers against uh, early creature decks, so it's a, a good addition to the style deck. And then we have Blood Moons, obviously, are pretty great against uh, like decks like Tron. Uh, so, and uh, obviously hoses like ra random other decks, but it's mostly for those kind of decks. Uh, and then we have Pia's uh, to start our fours, and obviously this thing, this creature's been a staple in pretty much every format since it was printed. Uh, it's just super efficient and uh, works as just removal and uh, just a pretty fast clock. It's actually really, really good. Uh, it's one of the considerations for uh, like playing the additional artifacts in this deck, like Mindstone and Relic. You can also use them for Pia if you want to at some point. So that's a nice, nice thing you can do. You can also randomly, if you really have, you can, if you get to batter skull of Pia, you do get gain life, which is a thing. Uh, might not come up, but it's definitely something that comes up. Uh, could come up, at least. But uh, we have some Eternal Scourges. This card hasn't really seen much play. It's been... I've seen it in fringe lists sometimes, uh, but it's just a creature that uh, whenever it dies, you just basically get to bring it back whenever you want when you have Relic in your deck. So you can trade with like creatures uh, they control and then just relic it out of your graveyard. Uh, it's a nice thing you can do, so. Uh, and then just play it again, or if it gets killed uh, by a removal spell, it just gets exiled always, so. Uh, that's pretty nice, but it's mostly the point of this card. 
just a reoccurring threat, and so you never have to run out. Of, you never run out of something to do. So, and then uh, the f we have f five different planes or five planeswalkers in this deck. Uh, we have four Coths. I assume this is better than Chandra, uh, just because it's a better pressure early or better pressure, where Chandra is just like a li uh, just a late game finisher button. So, the ultimate uh, the Koth does ultimate one turn earlier, so that's probably more important for this kind of deck because. It just wants the Planeswalker there to end the game on the spot and maybe ramp it some. Who knows? Both of them do that. So, all right. And then on the top end, are we have Chandra, a one of Chandra, but uh, pretty much everybody knows what this card does by now. It's pretty great. Uh, I haven't seen much play in standard, just because I don't know how good the red shells are to go around it. Most of the red decks are pretty aggressive and want to play like. Cheap creatures, there's a lot of burn, they go to the player and just don't want to do this, so. Uh, or just play Gideon and just the slot's taken up, so. Alright. In modern, I think it's a lot better, so it's pretty great. And then we have Storm Breath Dragons, uh, probably the best 5 mana finisher you can play in a mono red deck. Uh, it can't be pathed, uh, doesn't add a bolt, and it just can monstrous with the Koth. Koth minus if you want it to super early, and you can just like probably do the Chandra plus uh, get two extra mana and just ultimate it the next turn after you play it too, uh, or monstrous it, but which can get someone deal a bunch of damage. I don't know where, especially if you've blood mooned them and stranded a bunch of spells in their hands, it can easily in the game on turn six uh, with its ability if you have the ability to do it. So, uh, and then we have a, a Singleton Batter Skull, I guess, to help fight a uh, burn other decks, matchups like that, but it's definitely th something you can afford to play in your main deck in the style of deck, just to diversify your threats and have answers to more stuff, so so I think that seems pretty sweet. Alright, let's move to the sideboard. Uh, it has uh, two Shattering Threes to help fight artifacts. Obviously you have no sor shortage of red sources in this deck, so you can uh, normally do that for a pretty fair number, and you don't want to play something that destroys your own artifacts. Uh, I'm not sure if this card is better than uh, the Overload Destroy All Artifact card, but we'll see. Uh, we have some Ricochet Traps, uh, I guess to fight Counter Spells, but I'm not sure why this deck needs that. I don't know how prevalent Counter Spells are in the modern metagame at the moment, so, uh, but I don't know what else you would put in the sideboard, so we'll see how that one works out. Uh, additional land destruction, to help, I guess, to help fight Valakut and Trons even more. Uh, there are a lot of dead cards in that matchup in your main, so it's, I guess it's nice to have something else to board in. Uh, some additional threats in Goblin Rabble Master. Uh, for matchups where you don't need your removal, I'm sure you'll just boarding in these as well to fight through theirs. So it'll just another threat. It's probably the best one you can play. Could be more Eternal Scourges, but this guy is was pretty great in standard, so it's definitely nice to be able to try him out again. Uh, we have some uh, Dragon's Claws. Obviously, this matchup, this card is just exclusively for burn, uh, but it's a pretty nice uh, tool to fight them with our deck being almost entirely red as well. Gain tons of life from our own spells and their spells, so works out. And then we have an additional cage to help fight graveyard strategies and uh, uh, cord Coco decks, stuff like that. So let's get to the games.